like us, we've been in a football game mm. for a very long time. And when you don't get that contract and you go into the real world, it's mad. It's mad. It's, an, it's an identity crisis kind of thing, isn't it? Like all yeah. you've known your entire life is, I'm a footballer, footballer. I'm a footballer. Everyone's told you you're a footballer, you're a football player. And then now you're not a footballer no more. What are you? Exactly. Feel me? Man. Deeper, innit? That was deeper, that was deeper. <laughs> <laughs> that was deeper. I know it hit you. No, no, I, I like that, I like that. 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 So DC, who's who's Medi to you? He's Medi, Donny, isn't it? Sit <laughs> <laughs> for him. You've got to elaborate. You can't just say <laughs> Donny. <laughs> Hood celebrity, isn't it? <laughs> Hood celeb. Hood celeb for him. How how, how how would you, how, why would you say he's a Hood celeb? He doesn't know Medi. But how do you know him? Oh, just he's from custom. I'm from custom. That's how I know him, really. Like his name just circulates, isn't it? He does a bit of just a funny man. <laughs> <laughs> just a comedian, isn't it? He's just a funny guy. <laughs> wait, 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 really? So you're described as a comedian, a funny man? To some people, probably, yeah. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> that was I ain't even trying to violate. I ain't even trying to violate. That was classic. All right, so what was your first, like, obviously, everyone, you said everyone knows Medi. Yeah, yeah. What was your first, like, moment that? Okay, you recognise, oh, Medi, this guy. What was my first moment? Yeah. Um, it was when that tune came out, when you made that tune. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, she, yeah, that <laughs> one. When that one came out, I was like, hey, hey, then that's when I recognised him. Is it? It's a banger store. So when, mm. you, when you say, like, hood celeb, why would you say he's a hood celeb in his area? God, you can ask anyone in, like, knew him, don't know Medi, you get what I'm saying? Like, you say, who's Don E? They'll recognise, you feel me? Okay. How come, how come, how come, um, it's funny, you say he's recognised for his music. You know Medi has had a successful football career. Baller right? as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've seen his clips, you know, Baller as well. Why didn't you mention that, um, anything to do with football? Why did you mention, because he's had a successful career. Yeah, yeah. And um, you're on that journey, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So why would the first thing that come out, come out of your mouth to say, um, like just a comedian or funny? Cause I didn't really know him for the football kind of thing. Cause he used mm. to play for Barnet, innit? Mm, mm. And I, I, like, as a kid growing up, you're not really following Barnet, you feel yeah. me? So I knew well, His age group as well, where yeah. he was playing football. Yeah, yeah. He's he probably, like, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Like. That's what I'm saying. So I wouldn't even have known, like, you feel me? But now I know him for what he does now, like just, yeah. Yeah, I feel you. And, and are you aware, like, how much of a hood celeb or a uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm a hood celeb, I just say, like, I, would, I wouldn't even say a role model, I'm just me, like, people, people see me and they just love my energy and for the person I am, how I carry myself, like, DC said, like, he, he's seen me in a, in a band or way, what not, but then other people know me in other ways, but, in other ways, so, yeah, man, that's how I see myself, I don't look at myself as a role model or someone that's trying to... Yeah, but, hold on, so... Listen, this is, this is very interesting because he said, he's, he's from a younger, younger generation, mm. yeah? So he knows you through the Don E era. Yeah. Whereas other people younger than you know you through the Medi Alito era. And you're mm -hmm. still Medi Alito. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, for example, James knows Medi Alito. Mm. That's how James knows you. Whereas DC knows you as Don E. Are you aware that you are looked at as this, like, senior that people look up to? Uh, are you aware of that? I'm not even aware of that. I'll be honest, I'm not even aware of that. <laughs> I'm not even aware of that. I just, I just think everyone know, knows me as media leader, but I don't, I don't pay attention to the, the music side of things. I just think everyone that, who knows me as Don E knows me as media leader. I feel you. Do you know what's so funny, James? Yeah? Go on. <laughs> you thought one was going to be chatting to DC, yeah? yeah? The way you got flipped, yeah? <laughs> 
<laughs> he's right with right now. No, no, I'm not saying. Right. No, that, that's just, I'm, be, I'm being real. Like, that, yeah, I'm not aware of it. I'm not aware. <laughs> I'm, I've never been aware of it. Yeah. Seriously, people come up to me and say, oh, oh, I'm happy for what you're doing, but oh, you're like, you get me, it's inspirational, you're inspirational. I just look at this is, this is me, like, I'm just a, a normal guy, you get me? But when you get so many messages like that, then you start thinking, now you start thinking, wow. Mm. People actually look at me in that way. You get me? So people actually, and then that's when I started to take it in. But yeah, well, it's, it's sure. just normal me. Last, last question on this, yeah. Uh, so obviously now you said that when you get so many messages and that. So have you made a conscious decision in your daily actions since people, since you've noticed that people look at you as a role model? Yeah, I'll just try. Be honest, be honest. If you haven't, it's cool. You're still being you. But if you have, then. Um, no, I just try to take, um, you know, when people reach out to me, I just try to give them advice and that. And um, most of the young ones that play football, they're thinking when they message me, is he really going to message back? But man goes through my messages and uh, you get me a message on back, I reply and say, look, football, just put your head down, work, there's going to be tough times and there's going to be great times. I just give them the best advice again and people say thank you and that. So you ain't changed Medi. He ain't changed on me, I'm still the same person. I'm still gonna act. Act what? Act what? Act what? Act like a fool sometimes if I want to, but then there's times when you need to, you know, when you're in a certain place, you need to act accordingly. So, but yeah, I'll never change for no one. I've got one more question for you, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, you say you're a role model and you've noticed you're a role model, yeah. So, do you think you're being a good role model right now? No, obviously, answer the question. So you think you're a good role model right now wearing your hat like that? Yeah, it's, bro, it's, it's this is the way I want to look. It's my appearance. <laughs> bro, don't judge me because of my appearance. Now, that's what see what he's doing now. Let me flip on you. So you judge me. Whoa, 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 whoa. See? see? I didn't want it. I didn't think this was not part of the plan. Oh my god. Now don't don't take no don't take no notice of the hat. This is just the way I'm wearing my hat. And I'm not I'm not, I I'm, I'm, I'm I'm not a bad boy, you. I'm not anything. This is just the way no. I'm posted today. Oh, I hear you still. <laughs> Yo, so D say, how did the BBC thing come about? And the BBC thing, so um obviously I don't know if you man see that um Man City, ex Man City player that took his own life. Mm. Yeah. So obviously like around them times, um rising ball is like Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, like my brethren's work for Rising, like they own Rising Ballers, isn't it? Like um, any Brendan and Jamie. So they reached out to me. They were like, "Oh, we want you to tell your story." Like, and and the BBC wanna like produce it or whatever. And then like at the time, I didn't think nothing of it. Like I didn't think like I would get the um, what do you call it? Like the reaction that it got. So I was just like willing to do it just to raise like some mental, like some awareness on the mental health side of the book. Cause everyone just sees the glitz and glamour in it. No one really sees like what happens if it doesn't go the way it should go. But, yeah. And you told me um, offset earlier that um, it was meant to be you and someone else. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was meant to be me and like, um, an Arsenal player. So they wanted to show like, the contrast of like, how it can go if you do sign your pro and you just keep climbing the ladder. And then they wanted to show the other side of things, like how it goes if it doesn't go the right way kind of thing. And talk to us about your path, how it went now. Um, what? For people that didn't see the BBC thing. Oh, so what, from the start? Yeah. Uh, so um, I hadn't been at um, a club from like year 7 through year 11, innit? And you guys know at school, like if you're not on your, like if you're not at an academy side by the time you're year 10 or year 11, and, like me being African, like my mom's just telling man, yeah, like get prepared for college and like, that's where you're going. 100. So like I never thought of, um, like when, when I got to year 11, and I was never signed. It was a thing where like the, the football thing, I, I wanted to do the football thing, but it never really was at the, like, was at the um, full point of my mind kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? So I always heard like, oh D, like you're cold, you're cold, you're cold, but it never like came to fruition. Um, fruition. Like so, yeah, yeah. Big word, okay. Big word, isn't it? <laughs> Big did, you not have any, did you not have any trials at all? No, no, okay, like cool. so nice. from, through, from year seven to year eleven, it was always like a local club thing. Okay, cool. Like my local club with like my brethren that I went to school yeah. with and that in it. So I just always found football fun. So um, what was it? I think it was um, year eleven. 
Year, um, year 10, year 10 actually, met um, my current agent, Jamil Nadmi, like off, um, do you know where Hackney Marshes is? Yeah, like yeah, Mably. Yeah, yeah, Mably. Like, he was Mably. holding like, he was, trying to, he was trying to go around playing some teams and that, and then he was holding like, um, like open charts to get some players to put in the team. And then I remember like, I remember um, one of my brethren like shouting, man, they were like, oh, D, like, this, this agent's holding this like open trial thing, you should come down. Now I remember, like, I'll never forget the day, I remember talking to one of my other brethren, Iddy, and I was like to him, bro, like, I, I don't even want to come, kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all long in that, I've got revision to do and whatnot, like, I'd rather just stay at crib. And I remember my boy convincing me, like, telling me, come, 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 and then, obviously, went to the sesh, did my thing, and then it just kept going from there. And then, um, what was it, when, and then I remember, um, he had, like, my agent had the, had the Newcastle link, and then at the time, like there had no, um, there hadn't been any London boys that had gone up that far north in it. Car with them, it was a thing where so it's a long way up north. Yeah, yeah, long way up north, flat. Like. Long way up north. Way, way up north, flat. Like. <laughs> way, way up north. O T O T O T. O T O T O T. O T O T O T, fam. O T O T O T. Like you get sent up there, yeah, it's long. So <laughs> <flipping>. <laughs> they had like up in Newcastle. Um, there's a thing where car, there's not too many like bear clubs up north in it, and there's bear clubs down south, like London and that. So they always wanted to give opportunities to the boys up there because they thought we already had all our opportunities down here. So like, I remember like my agent telling me, um, like when you go up there, you're one of the first boys to like actually go to Newcastle, like from London. So like you just have to you get it set the way, like kind of thing, that, like go in there and set a good impression. So yeah, God willing, I went in there, um, and they. Did, did my thing, I think I was up there for like two, three weeks, like in and out, and these times that like I had, um, so these times it was the 11, so I had my GCSEs to do, and I was going up there, so, but luckily they, um, they offered me my scholar, and then, yeah, went from there. So you got offered your scholar, and how was that? You was over the moon? Oh, uh, crazy feeling, car. You have to remember, like, it's, it's the 11, innit? So I'm just thinking, yeah, it's college next, it's like, it's a college thing. And I'm not even, like, I'm thinking when I go to college, I ain't even banging wall, you feel me? That's just long. So, and then I remember, I remember, like, but I'll, I'll never forget, like, the day my agent told me they offered me my scholar. So we went to watch, because um, he had another player at Ipswich. We went to watch the, um, his, his other player's game, and he just sat me in the car, and he was like, oh, like, I just got to go into Newcastle. They've decided that they want to give you a scholar. And, like, you can imagine a guy that's never been signed before, like, yeah. Hearing that, bro, you're about to sign like a two-year Premier yeah, League club, like you feel you're me? You're gonna start making yeah, some yeah. money as well. That's what I'm saying. And at the time, um, Huddersfield offered me scholar as well, so it was like it was a contrast. It was like you could go Huddersfield or you could go Newcastle, but obviously yeah. you're always gonna pick like the Premier League team. Yeah. You feel me? Especially at that age. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So let me let me ask you this, yeah. So talent, you've been up north. Yeah, yeah. You've been the furthest up north. Mm -hmm. So talent. Up north versus talent down south. Talent down south. Yeah. Yeah, it's talent down south still. Like I'm not even trying to try to I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, but agree. you didn't but you didn't even have time to think. You just said south, yeah. No, it's, just, it's an easy it's an yeah, easy yeah. question. It's like it's I've grown up down south, I've seen ballers, you feel me? But so but like, what have the northerners or let's say from mid from Midlands upwards, yeah, yeah. what have they got over people down south? Because there is something. Yeah, yeah. I wanna see what, if you just, know it. The, the the hard work side of things. They might go. just run till they can't run no yeah, more. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> like, they might not have the flair. They might not have the shazam. But they they might run till they can't run no more. I, I agree with you because I feel like down south we're the most talented. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, London. I feel like it's oversaturated with talent. Yeah. I always tell a lot of players that if you grew up up north or if you grew up Midlands, you will be way further than you will be right now. Yeah, you know what I mean? But I feel like up north they just teach you that hard, that yeah, graft, yeah. and that that mentality yeah, and I feel like that's where people down south lack, 100%. you know what I mean? And you have to remember it's like mm. the way you've grown up as well kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like the way we've grown up, especially down south, like speaking on a personal, like from a personal perspective, like bro, you're, you're, you're playing in the cage and that, who's like doggying in the cage, you know what I'm saying? In the cage is just about who's got the most flair, who can pause, the pause, most man. Pause, 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 doggy in the cage. 
Like, just... <laughs> um, you men are taking it the wrong way. <laughs> you <laughs> said, bro. Bro, bro your mind is going bro, somewhere else. Bro, you're casting your words, bro. Your mind is going somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> else. My mind. Like, like, you know, two, you know, know I thought, and I thought, wait, let me just let him carry on. But I thought, wait, don't be in the cage. <laughs> oh, man. You're not taking it the wrong way. Let me tell you what's so The fact that you men are thinking like that is mad. I'm not asking you because I don't know what that is. What is that? Don't in the cage, like... Hard in working the in the cage, yeah. you feel what me? What do you mean? Like just running cage. around doggies. You've Dog- never doggies, what do you bro. Mean? Doggies no, in the cage, bro. <laughs> You the man, no more twisted, man. He said doggy in the cage. He said doggy in the cage. He said it casual. This is how you go viral. This is how you go viral. You man are gonna tell me viral for starting that. You man are gonna. Oh, I'm gonna see myself with Andrew Bate and that. I'm not on that. I'm not on that. Not on that. You can't say you were doggy in the cage. You guys know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Go ahead. Oh, East, okay. Yeah, but many will know. No, no, no. Many will know. What that means, like, we don't know what it means, bro. Tell us what it means. Just that hard work. Like you're not in the cage, just working hard. You Maybe have you dug it in the cage? <laughs> no, uh, bro. No, no. I've never. This camera here. I've never ever. Dogged in a cage. Never dogged in the cage. Yeah, yeah. Never said, ever dogged in the cage. You just said he was dogging in the cage. I said we it. don't doggy in the cage. What? You said, you said I said we don't doggy in the cage. Okay. Watch back the clip. Watch back the clip. <laughs> so we don't doggy in the cage. Okay. Okay. We don't hard work. Like hard in the mm. cage. Mm. You feel okay. me? It's all about the nutmegs, the flair, and that. Whereas I'm, I'm thinking the North men. That man have been working hard since. That man are basically dogging yeah, in the cage. Dogging. Ah, cool, cool, cool. I get you. Don't use it now. But um, how 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 did your family take it when they when when they heard the news of you going to Newcastle? I mean, it was surreal. Like, it, it were was they just, on board straight away? Um, yeah, yeah, because they they knew I wanted to be a footballer, innit? Yeah. They want they knew I wanted to be a professional football player. And they knew like this was the first step. Like, obviously, Newcastle being so far away from London wasn't ideal. But it was a it was a thing where like they like they weren't gonna stop me from trying to achieve what I want to achieve. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. So let, 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 let me ask you guys this year. Um, do you guys watch NBA? Yeah. yeah. All right, so do you, you guys know about the drafting system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so the drafting system for people that are watching it is basically uh, you, go, you go college or whatever, you go uni or whatever, and you have to do your education. And when you finish your education, that's when you get drafted to the NBA. Mm-hmm. But for the people that don't make it, at least they've got like an education to fall back onto. You know what I mean? But football, you haven't got that safety net, you know? So do you guys think, yeah, that they should incorporate a similar system like that in the football world so that a lot of footballers have a safety net to fall back on? Because right now, over the last year, you know, with COVID, COVID. and that, yeah. A lot of players have been released from academies and a lot of players are, are at home, clubless, you know what I mean? And, and just, just trying, to, trying to find their way back into the game. So with that being said, do you feel like the footballers, like young, when you do that scholarship system or whatever, the YT, you should also, I know they say the B-Tech thing, but you know, we didn't, we didn't take it seriously like that. Yeah. Do you feel yeah. like we should have a, a system where where you have education to fall back on because in, in America, if you don't get your grades, you don't play. That's, that, that, that's how it is in America, but we don't have that here. You know what I mean? So what do you think? What's education going to do? To fall back on. But what's it going to do if you get your grades? I know people that's gone through education and they have, they're still bums. So I understand what you're saying, but going back to education, tell me what's it going to do. You, at least, at least you will have that degree. Or right, something. A job, and job might, job might pop up, yeah. Economics. Do you know what I mean? At least you can go into another field without feeling like, oh my God, I didn't make it in football. Yeah, what the really hell cool. am I going to do? Because that's what a lot of people feel. They're like, I've given this thing everything I've got. What else am I going to do? At least with education, you know a little bit about something else. Yeah. You, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, so a smooth transition. Yeah, another, yeah, right? kind of. Like, you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Of course, we already know that's a whole nother subject. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but, but, yeah, what do you think? Reds? I think they should still, like, for, for people like us, we've been in a football game mm. for a very long time. And when you don't get that contract and you go into the real world, it's, it's mad. 
It's an, it's an identity crisis kind of thing, isn't it? Like, all yeah. you've known your entire life is, I'm a footballer, footballer. I'm a footballer. Everyone's told you you're a footballer, you're a football player. And then now you're not a footballer no more. What are you? Exactly. Do you know I mean? no, deeper, no. innit? That was deeper, that was deeper. <laughs> <laughs> that was deeper. I know it hit you. No, 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 I, I like that, I like that. 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 Yeah, no. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna talk to you about my experiences um being in a in a youth academy setup. Like I was um <laughs> <laughs> um people are laughing in the background but I'm not gonna say no notice. Um but yeah, DC, I started off at um um Millwall um as a sixteen year old playing for one of my, my <laughs> Wait, what do you wanna say? No, nothing, I'm listening, I'm listening. <laughs> Why is everyone laughing? Like, no, what do you see? Many just looked at me like. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, I started off at Millwall when I was 16. Um, and I was playing a, a game for, for Millwall against Southampton. Um, we lost 5 2. Shocker scored score 2. Um, but after that game, a Stoke City <laughs> scout came to me and said to me, um, we should go up to Stoke and play for um, the academy there. So I went up there and I, I played for them. Um, I signed my contract and I was fast tracked to, like, to the first team. And within a year of playing against like United, Liverpools and teams like that, mm -hmm. um, I done well and Celtic came in for me. So I went up to Scotland and signed a three year deal at Celtic. Um, played in youth champions leagues and, 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 and whatnot. But that experience was good for me because I came from an area where, just like you, it was difficult for you to go through the academy system, but you managed to get through. I didn't quite make the breakthrough to the first team, but I still got through to a stage where I'm still playing professional football yeah. till now. And I just want to know how things ended with you when you went up to Newcastle. Um, so... Um, Newcastle now, done great in um, in my first year, like done great in my first year, and then we've come back for the second year now. So obviously, like doing so well, you scored that FAU Cup goal, right? I got the penalty for it. I won the penalty. Oh, okay. for it. Yeah, yeah. Jengi run, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be. Yeah, oh. so I've done all of that, and then um, come back for the second year, and like you're thinking, um, you've done so well in your first year, you're just gonna be like. With the like in and around the 23s, like when you come back, obviously you've come back from pre season, um, come back for pre season, and like the first game of pre season, done my knee, like done my knee, so like in training, no, nah, no, nah, in, the, in the pre season game, okay. I think it was against like um, Carlisle, so I can't even remember, done my knee, um, missed the pre season tour. And then, um, what was your mindset going into that first preseason game? Because I'm gonna rewind you. Yeah, you said something. You might not even have noticed what you said. You said you've come back in preseason, and you automatically thought you were gonna be with the under 23s, right? Yeah, yeah. But you wasn't. Okay, so you've gone and played against Carlisle. Yeah, yeah. What was your mindset going into that Carlisle game? Um, it was just like be honest. Honestly, talking like it was a thing where like up to that point. I've had to work for everything I've had. You get it? Nothing's been plated up to me. So it was a thing where, like, just because I think I should be with the 23s, don't mean I deserve to be with the 23s. You feel so me? So was you, was you on it or was you a yeah, bit no, pissed? I was on it. Okay, I, was, cool. I was on it. Like, okay, cool. I was on it. Um, yeah. Got into the game, got injured. Uh, missed the preseason tour. Like, they went up to Ireland and then they've come back and I've rehabbed, blah, 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 got back into it. And then I think, like, I played, I played a couple more games, like, five, six more games. Then, um, um, in training, one one brother like one in-house game. So like for people that don't know, an in-house game is like when the team play each other in it, yeah, like a yeah. like a just a normal game. Yeah. And then in that game, um, one of my teammates, like actual teammates, just come right through me, bow like absolutely clattered me like on the vid. Like you can hear the noise that it makes with the connection. Like you can see how uh, bad the foul up is. North, up north, these people yeah, are serious. Yeah, on the matting on the matting, but. There's a difference between being serious, like, and there's a difference between dragging it, like, bro, you're dragging it, you feel mm. me? So that's happened now. And, like, I'm a player that, that's used to getting fouled a lot, but this, this one stayed on the floor, couldn't get up. Got into, um, got into the physio room, looked at my knee, 
physio's gone, yeah, safe. Like, knee sw swollen up, mad. Just looking at it, thinking, ah. Oh. And up till then, I had never been injured, like, I'd never been injured, like, since, like, from year seven through to year 11, like, that was my first injury. Like, because the pre-season one, it was an injury, but it was, like, a minor injury. But that was my first, like, major um, injury, in it, my MCL. And I remember, pff, yeah, like, it was just a maze, like, one of the worst times of my life. Like, anyone that's been injured, being injured is the worst thing you could, like, that can happen to you in football. Cause all you want to do is play football. And when you're injured, you can't do the one thing that you want to do, you feel me? How was, how was your mental at that stage? Uh, it just wasn't there. Like, I, I remember um, going to see the, going to see, like, the, the knee specialist and him, like, as soon as he told me, like, it's looking like, you're gonna be up for like five months, four, five months. I remember my mental just dropping, like straight away. You get me, like it was just, yeah, it was just not, it, I just lost myself kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Who, who was there for you, would you say, at that period of time? Um, he was there for me, in terms of up there or like, overall? Um, obviously like, my family, uh, my, my brethren, like my, uh, my friends, like, and the physios, like two, two Newcastle physios, like, my, like proper physios, they were there for me and like a couple of, the, like, couple of my teammates and that. So you, you got through rehab, what happened once you got through rehab? Um, so I got through rehab and whatnot and then like these times they were making decisions in it. They were making decisions on who to give pros to or not. So like before the injury, like I would have been, I would have been like one of the guys to get given pros to, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, like I would say 100% in it and like most players would think 100% just because like I played every game and I'd been doing so well up to then. And then like it was like they were giving out the pros and that. And I remember clocking like they're giving pros to everyone else and like obviously I've I've just come out of like I've just come back from rehab, so I'm not thinking anything of it. And then obviously it dragged, it dragged, it dragged, and then they hadn't given me my pro, spoke to my agent and they were like, Oh, we wanna watch him till the end of the season kind of thing. But at that point, in my head, I've already signed out. You get what I'm saying? Like Why just, would you sign out? Just because, like, like I said, up north is it's quay from home, innit? And, like, I, I had never realised, like, I'd never taken in the distance till I got injured. Till I, like, I was alone with my mind for, for three, four months. You get what I'm saying? Like, then it started to dwell on me, like, bro, you're actually so far from home, like, and you have no support around you kind of thing. You get what I'm saying? So it was, and I just didn't enjoy playing football no more. Like, I signed up. Like, it was a thing where, like, I'd been out for so long, and I was so far from home and like my joy of playing the game just went. Like I, I just didn't want to be there no more. So what was the differences um, from when you were doing well and you had your injury and you were playing? What did you do that was different in terms of you signing out? Would you, like you was training bad or you was, um, your attitude was wrong? Or? I, I would say, I, I wouldn't say I was training bad kind of thing. I would say my, like, my attitude wasn't really wrong, but it was kind of wrong. Like, I, I Why would you say that? Like, I wouldn't say I was going in as hard as I used to kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't going in 100% with everything that I did. Like, like I said, I, I just didn't want to play football no more. So it was a... And what was the response from your coaches? Were they telling you, these things, what's, what's up or what's wrong or what's um, going on? Nah, nothing really like that. I think I'd, I'd done a, a good job of like masking it kind of thing. Like with, with everyone that plays football, like there's so many things that you have to mask, you get it? So I think I'd done such a good job of masking it they never really ask questions kind of thing. You feel me? Once it wasn't meant. So you've been through a similar situation where you, have, you felt like you didn't want to play football no more, right? Um, what would you, how did you get out of it? What would you say to DC? How, how you got out of it? Bro, at that time when I didn't want to play football, I'm not going to lie to you, it's just being around certain people that was just uplifting, you know? And there was times when I was going into training like, me purposely just f***ed back because I knew that I didn't want to be there. But I'm looking at other people around me, like, laughing, joking, enjoying. And I think, bro, oh, everyone's laughing and joking. Why am I going to be the only one to get me sad in that? And I said, you know what? Let me change my mindset. From then, I started bantering. You know me, like I said, yeah. Fem, I've done it before. Bantering with everyone. Then from there, something just came into man saying, bro, this is not you, you love playing football. You love playing football. Bro, then from then it just changed, my mindset just changed because I couldn't be, I couldn't sit there 
dwelling on, I don't want to play football no more. I'm just looking at everyone enjoying it and I'm the only one that's saying, oh, fuck football. Like, this is not for me. So when everyone's happy around me, it just changed my mindset and I said, you know what, let me start enjoying it again. And it just changed like that. Then I started playing and enjoying it again. And that's his experience. It's not everyone's going to be like that and say, okay, you know what, I'm just going to switch my mindset yeah. and be cool and yeah. be happy again. So how did you... Get my love for the game again. Mm. It was when I... Um, so when I got released and I come back to ends, like I come back to ends and I okay, was... but rewind. What happened when they saw that you... You, you knew that you loved, um, you lost the game for, you loved the, yeah, lost yeah. the love for football. And what happened? How did you get released? Or how did you get, how did that period come um, up? So there were, um, it was a thing where I remember my, my agent had bailed me and like, I, I told him like, could you, could you tell them to make a decision? Like, could you tell them to make a decision? Cause they wanted to watch me till the end of the season kind of thing. Yeah. But in my head I was thinking, bro, you men have seen me like play for a year and a half. Like, you know, like, you know whether you want to keep me on or not. So it was a thing where, like, I remember um, I was in the gym with the 23s and, like, just bannering and whatever. Then I got called in for the meeting. And, I re like, I remember, um, like, going into the meeting, think, like, in, like, I kind of knew, like, what they were going to say, but, like, you, it, there's a difference knowing and, like, there's a difference knowing what they're going to say and then it's different when the words actually come out of someone's saying. mouth. You get what I'm saying? So obviously I'm there with, like, the important people and whatnot, and they're just like talking, blah blah blah. Talk, yeah, you know how they give you the talk, like you're good, bro. And then it's just like, yeah, we're not gonna be offering you a pro. And then it's like, when you hear them words, it's like, bro, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like I, I've been there, so yeah, yeah. my experience is is kind of different um, to Medi and James. You know, those boys were superstar. These boys are superstars before, from their mother's womb, and that. <laughs> you know, I had to. Grow up on mine. <laughs> but, but yeah, I've been, all jokes aside, I've actually been there. So um, when I got released from, from, from QPR, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Off camera, yeah. we've heard QPR. Bro, I don't even talk about it that you much. You're forcing it, bro. Let go. No, it's been gone. Sake, it's man. been gone. Sorry, go on. But anyways, yeah. When I've done my YIT at QPR, my scholarship, or whatever, and similar to you, I, I really thought I was gonna get the pro professional contract, and and it was a no, it was a no, and I just remember it was an ultimate low. Like I'm not gonna disrespect people, like to the people that's actually been depressed, but it was, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't far away from that. You know, what I mean, it was a, it was a low where. You literally didn't have the motivation to do anything. So I remember for a good six months, and you can ask my brother, and you can ask um, my my mate Larry, that I was waking up, I was making toast, and I was watching my wife and kids in front of the TV all day for six months. Didn't have the motivation to get up and go for a run. I just didn't have it, bro. Do you get what I'm saying? I, and I don't know why, because I'm a proper motivated guy. I just couldn't seem to find it. But there's always a silver lining, isn't it? So obviously... Was that your first setback in football? Was it my first setback? Mm, no, nah, it wasn't. But do you know what it is? It was my first big break. So like, I've always done like Sunday League, but then I went South End when I was a kid for a little bit. A semi pro AFC one, but then made my debut 16 and that. Then I went QPR, but so it's, it wasn't. So I've had setbacks, but that was like, bro, you're actually getting money from this, and it's like they're taking it away, you know what I mean? And on top of that, you've got agents, you know, that agent you were talking about on the last episode. <laughs> I swear down, bro, but, but yeah, that agent you're talking about on the last episode promising you. Like the world, do you know what I mean? So you're, you've got an expectation, you're, you're 18 and you've got expectations that, okay, this guy's gonna do this for me, so I'm all right. And then it don't come through, but you're already upset that you've been released mm. and then you're seeing your friends get a pro. And it's just a, a combination of all of that. And it just led me into, I'm not gonna use the word, it wasn't depression, it wasn't depression, but it was, bro, I had to go and work. I had to go and work, you know what I mean? Where did you, where did you work? I didn't know this. No, 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 no. no, no. Talk, talk about this. 
I need yeah. this one. To... No, we need to hear this one. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. We need to hear this one. Go, Wait, go no, on. we need to hear this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the start of the show? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We, need yeah. we need to hear this one. Oh! We need to hear this one. Yeah. Oh, hello, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I know this one. Where did you go? Go on. Yeah, like, so obviously I worked in a, um, a market research company, like, man's calling up. People Why are you like, trying to make it sound cool in that? Like, Marcus Reese, I'm trying to tell you. No, I'm, I'm breaking it down. Bro. Okay, go, break it down. Call up people, say, yeah, the ones that get. You know, the, the ones you lock off, bro. It's even like I forgot, it's even like I forgot I work there because I just, I just locked one off just a minute ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you know, like that. Yeah. So, so, but I used to be the people that just ring your phone just asking for a survey and that. Yeah. A survey and that. You know what I mean? Like nothing, like nothing. Just a survey and that. Like, but you, we move in it. Like, do you know what I'm saying? We move. So, so, so. <laughs> no, but I get it. You see, is, no, see no, what yeah. Firm just said? Because it's like, from young, when you come out of that QPR or academy, like, you said it before, when you go back to your ends, it's like, you're the man. That's the guy that's playing for QPR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the guy that's playing for Newcastle. And that. So when you step out of that environment and you have to go and work, it's like now all your friends and people that rating you highly, thinking, wow, that's going to work. But then again, this is what I say, there's nothing wrong with working well. No, I've, got, I've got biggest respect for people like that because I've been in teams where they, they've they been released mm. and I just love to hear the story. Obviously, we're bantering you, but I love to hear the story about people that have to take two steps back to go ten steps forward, do you know what I mean? So, people like that are strong to me mm. because for you to make that transition to go and work and not care about what anybody thinks and then come back into the game, it's, it's a big thing. Respect, man. respect, respect. Appreciate that, man. But, um, so yeah, like, where 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 are you at now, though? What's happening now? Where's D D Saker single at so, right now? Um, right now, I've obviously overcome all like the injuries that I had in it. Yeah. Overcome the injuries. Um. So right now it's just about pushing on. Like I, I was thinking about the twenty threes route, but it's a thing where I'm twenty now in it. So obviously I'm I'm still young, but I want to try get into the the first team game as as soon as and, and as early as possible. I truly believe like I'm good enough to play first team, you feel me? Yeah. So like the angle that I'm looking at now is like a um, a conference side, a national league side. Okay. Do like because it's still a, a top level. Them and are yeah. playing for like their families and that, you yeah. feel me? And, so it's and, 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 and I don't want to keep talking about like stories and stuff, but this is what's so funny about football now. You're saying you're trying to get into a national league side. So when I when I did get released from QPR, yeah, I went on trial to a team called and that was the seventh time. Keep <laughs> That's the seventh time. Uh, I was like, what do you call it? On the couch for six months, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward. Started picking up a phone, ringing up managers myself, yeah. Got through to a club called Histon, yeah. It was before your time. You were probably like 10 years old then. Got through to a club called Histon. They were in the conference prem at the time, National League, yeah. They said they'll take me on trial. So I've gone there. But... You know, like when you go there, they're actually treating you like a trialist. Like, yeah. have you ever been treated like a trialist? You know, it's a different. You're not treated like one of them. Because yeah. you've you've always sorry to cut you. You've always been on the opposite side where Trials you, just, yeah, yeah, and you see it, bro. It's it's oh, not good. It's, man. Yeah, they see you on your t-shirt. Yeah, oh, so they're you, treating me you, like you a shit. trialist. Like, man, I ain't got training kit. Like, like I'm just pulling up. Sometimes they even making me sit out of shape, sit on the floor, watching the shape like that. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm travelling, bro, do you know what Histon is? Cambridge. I'm travelling all the way to Cambridge to go and sit on the floor and watch shape like this and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But anyways, yeah. Fast forward, so I've gone on trial then and I've played the game. And I think I've done all right there, but they're like, they're like, um and aren't, um and aren't, like, not sure about me. Ah, right, cool. Fast forward, I signed for Dagenham and Redbridge. Guess who came in for me on loan? The same the club, same Histon. Team, yeah. Six months later after I was on trial. Six, so I'm telling you this story because I was always good enough to, to play for that team. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But now, because I've got a little League One yeah. contract at Dagenham and Redbridge, it's like, oh yeah, hiss them. Oh, Femi, oh, we'll take him. I remember him, we'll take him. And I've went there and I've been the main man. I've ran the show there. Like, do you know what I'm trying to say? And it's, it, just, it just didn't make sense because I was always good enough. But why did it have to take for me to be at a League One club for six months. 
How much are you going to improve six months later? You're going to improve, but not that much where they think, oh my days, we want you to come in and be our That's main our man. Work, I was good enough to be the main man from before. Do you know what I mean? And, and yeah, cut long story short, I went, I went to Histon and uh, I had a very successful spell there and I got recalled back to Dagenham and, and that's how I started playing League One football, you know what I mean? But it just goes to show, so when you're saying that, oh yeah, you're trying to, you think you can play, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this to let you know, bro, you can do it. Don't let nobody tell you you can't. I've lived it, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? I've lived it. You can do it. So you have to believe in yourself to go out there and get it and get that opportunity. And when that opportunity comes, you have to take it with both hands. There's no time. There's no time. Like me, I wasted, I wasted time sitting on the sofa eating toast. I know it's a funny story, but that was, that was six months wasted. I can't get that time back. Do you know what I'm saying? You, you, it's, it's my job to make sure people like you don't waste that time. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So you have to go out there and get it. And like I said to you off camera, I said the only thing you can control is yourself, your development, your progression. You can't control who X, Y, and Z is signing. There's nothing you can do about that. As long as you focus on your thing, bro, on your development, your progression as a player, then you're good. I promise you now. You know what I mean? That, mm. Mm. But that, that, that's a fair point though. You know the focusing on yourself. Like yeah. It's definitely... Um, easier said than done. Like, cause you're seeing like guys, guys you played with, guys like you you grew up, <laughs> guys you grew up playing yeah. with, and like you're seeing them make their their um, debuts and that, and you're just thinking like, if I had done this different, or like if I had taken this more serious, or like if I had never had all the injuries, that could have been me. You you feel me? I think that's a there's a lot of players that think like that. Like mm. it's way easier said than done. Focus on yourself. No, it is. Like, it actually takes like proper tapping into your brain and that. And that's why I hope that, I hope, but that you, I hope that you get it now. I hope that you get it now. And and cameras aside, we'll speak in it. But I hope that you get it now before you get it when you're 27 or 28. You have to get it now. And I'm gonna take you for for a session. I'm gonna I'm gonna see what you're about. Do you got know what I'm saying? I say. Yeah, what position are you again? I'm gonna yeah, take you for a session. Yeah, Quick. Yeah. Skills. Yeah, yeah. Goals. Yeah, yeah. Are you better meds? <laughs> <laughs> nah, these saying like, like I was saying, you're gonna play in the prem. Oh, you got winning, man. No, like Fem said, you know when you just focus on yourself and just work hard. Like, Cause I used to be like that. What Fem said, when I when I can't motivate myself now, the first thing I do, I look at James or Fem is snap when I wake up in the morning, and Fem's up working from six a.m. in the morning. He's already in the gym, on the pitch like seven doing drills, like what it says, training before training. Bro, when I'm in my bed waking up at eight or nine, I look, I look at the snap, bro, let me put my thing, let me go running. Cause see, these men, it's, it's in my head, bro. I can't sit down when Femi and James and that are working and I'm just chilling, go and do my thing. As soon as I see the snap, yeah, it's time for me to do running. And I, I'm, like, I'm grateful that I've got people like these around me. Cause if you ain't got people on your snap like that, then bro, you're just gonna be, lounging around then nothing you get me but i'm happy that i'm, I'm grateful that i got these two around me mm, so, 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 so yeah man no, i appreciate that meds man for letting them know as well but um just to just to wrap it up now like i said man i'm gonna do i do one to one so i'm gonna do one to one with you we're gonna get together and do a session what doggy but, um, in the cage <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. 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 And also, secondly, I ain't meeting you. No custom house. I ain't coming nowhere near that. Yeah. You meet me at Central Point, but just to wrap it up, yeah, obviously, James, um, you you claim that youth team ain't a distant memory for you. You claim. Yeah. It's cool, it's cool. It's cool, it's cool, James. Yeah. I let you claim that one. Yeah. I let you claim that one. Yeah. So obviously, you claim it's not a distant memory for yeah. you. So, what advice would you give to to young boys like like DC? Because we've had conversations where we know the decision you want to become a decision that when the decision you make that I want to become a footballer. It comes with sacrifices. It comes with highs. It comes with lows. No excuses. Yeah, we've had those conversations. Yeah. So what excuse? I mean, what advice would you give to to decent and other people in his position right now that's just been released from an academy and you know trying to find their way back in? The, the biggest thing for me is in football is your mental. 
And my advice to people like you and, and people that's out there is you always have to believe in yourself. Your football is always going to give you setbacks. I think it's going to give you more setbacks than things that are, are good. And one thing you can't do is lose belief in yourself. So the main thing for me is that self-belief. A gaffer is going to tell you you're not good enough. A coach is going to tell you you're not good enough. One of your team, I've been in teams where the, the t my teammates around me don't think I'm good. And I can feel it. You know you can feel it, like they don't, they don't rate you. I've been that guy where, you know, they pick the teams and they, they're saying James is picked and the whole team's going, ah. Oh. Mm. I've been that guy. No, no. <laughs> I've been that guy. You get, you get what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I've never lost belief in myself. I don't want to go into it and say, oh, you have to do this and you have to do that. You can only, like Femme said earlier, you can only control what you can control. And for me, whenever I get a setback, I always think that something's going to turn for me if I carry on doing the right things. But that comes from self-belief. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So for me, it's just the self-belief. That's great advice. Yeah, you've got a That's, decent, man. That's it. You've had three people that are, are, have lived it, are currently living it, and we're just here to pass the torch down to people I like yourself. I appreciate it. Bro. I appreciate it. Mehdi, what you got to say, bro? Whenever you're ready to train, you know where to catch me. Like, let me show you one, two things, bro. In the studio or...? No, nah, no, nah, on the pitch. You see, man still got skills that was meant to come out all 17. not out yet. So man will teach, <laughs> man will teach you a few skills. You get I me? That. And I believe him too. Mm. I believe him too. Hey, big up, DC, man. Thanks for having me. Big up, big up, big up, big up, big up. See that doggy in the cage? He needs to stop. No. <laughs> hey, that was, hey. that was actually good. You say you said you said two times like twelve times. Bro, what is man's scarred subconsciously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got PTSD. Oh.